Good afternoon, uh, people that are joining. Uh, we still have a few minutes, so we'll wait. And if anyone has uh, any questions ahead of time, you can already start in chat. Uh, but we're expecting to start in about five minutes. So we see people joining, uh, some hellos in chat. Hello to everyone. Hello to Barcelona. Hello, Kuwait. Uh, we see it's going to be a pretty global <laughs> webinar. Right. Hi, Brazil as well. Good afternoon, Romania, too. So for those who have only just joined, uh, we're expecting to start in a couple of minutes. Uh, let's see if, you know, maybe we have someone who's a minute or two late, so we don't rush into things. And, you know, we will have, we should have enough time to go through most of the things anyway. And just in case someone's a little bit late, we'll give them a couple more minutes. And of course, hello, Germany. Hello, Denmark. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I think I skipped Hungary. So hello, Hungary, too. Hi, Spain. too and I think we are pretty much ready to start Hi, Austria Cuba yeah. <laughs> all over the world definitely quite global uh, so I think uh, we can start maybe if anyone jo joins uh, a little bit late uh, you will be able to uh, see the uh, recording afterwards as well so you won't miss too much anyway and maybe let's just uh, jump into today's webinar. Uh, so obviously, welcome everyone to the second webinar for our newest and potential partners here at Ruptella. We're happy to see everyone uh, join again. Hopefully, some of you already saw the first webinar about the hardware uh, part of the uh, Ruptella's uh, solution. Um, but today, we'll uh, have a closer look at the software side as well. Uh, we have today here uh, our Trust Track product manager, Nettinga, who is running the development team that constantly is working to improve and perfect Trust Track. And of course, we have myself, uh, the key account manager for the European region, Sharunas, not to be mistaken with the ever Sharunas, who was the product owner and led the first uh, webinar about hardware. Quite a few Sharunas in Lithuania. <laughs> Uh, so we'll try uh, to introduce and highlight some of the most important and valuable parts of Ruptella software for you today. And to start with, you know, we would like to run a quick poll for everyone who's joined. Uh, it's a very simple question. If you have, uh, just answer uh, yes or no. And the question is, have you already tried and or tested uh, Trust Track before? Uh, this would help us to understand, you know, in general, if, if the people in the webinar, if the um, attendees have actually some uh, experience with Trust Track, if they do, uh, we will maybe focus on you know more on the uh, 
values uh, and and uh, possibilities and you know we will know if if you haven't maybe should we should go deeper into functionality side of it as well in the meantime while we're here while we're waiting for some of the results uh, let's maybe check out our um, agenda for today okay so on the agenda today we'll have a quick look uh, first of all at the general overview of trust track our fleet uh, management platform uh, then we'll have uh, um, sort of look closer at what are the components what does the ecosystem consist of uh, we'll have a demonstration through the end user's eyes so you will be able to see all the modules and all the functionalities that are there for the end user and we plan to you know take a more in-depth look at two very important modules today so we'll expand on those a little bit more uh, one of them being the routing and tasking module and the other one being the tachograph solution uh, later, depending on time, we'll try and answer as many of the questions that uh, we see here in chat. Uh, so we'll try and get some as we're going through, but if you don't get an answer right away, uh, we'll pick it up at the end or uh, we'll pass it along to your sales manager and get you the relevant information afterwards anyhow. And last but not least, uh, we have, and arguably the most important part, uh, right at the end, we have a special offer. So make sure you uh, stick around for the offer. And I see that almost 80% of the audience uh, has voted. Uh, however, it seems that it's it's pretty evenly split. Maybe uh, a few more people have actually tested Trust Track already a little bit, but it's pretty evenly uh, split. So we're happy to see that uh, you had the chances, and for the one, for the ones that haven't yet, this I think would be a great start anyway. And we hope that you try it in in the near future too. Right. So let's begin maybe with the first thing on the agenda. Neriga, do you? Yeah, I take over. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, so if everyone is ready. So let's begin. Let's uh, jump into the actual product uh, values and everything what's related into it. Uh, so first of all, the what's and the why's, you know, in a general overview of the trust track as such. Um, so likely by now, it's no surprise to you. Uh, trust track is uh, only one part of Reptella's overall full solution. Uh, the ones who attended my colleague's uh, other Sharuna's <laughs> webinar already know that we're also hardware provider, accessories provider, everything uh, that needs uh, to be covered from the client perspective. Um, why so? Because we like to think of ourselves, of Proptella, as a one-stop shop for all of your telematic needs. Uh, so you would come to us and get everything uh, from one provider. So what we'll do today, today we'll focus on the software side, of course. Um, so what is Trust Track? Um, plain and simple, it's a GPS tracking platform uh, that we develop here by Reptella in Vilnius in Lithuania. Uh, it is a software as a service solution, meaning that, you know, user pays a subscription fee, monthly sub subscription fee for the object for using it. Uh, rather than having all of the hassle and buying uh, a license up front uh, and, and having um, to think about how to work with that. Uh, so Trust Track as a platform has a wide range of features that work uh, both for the beginners and the advanced users. And uh, it's available you know, both on the web uh, version and also on the mobile version for fleet managers. Uh, so we have a mobile app for the drivers uh, as well. What is the most important as we see it? Uh, it's integral integral platform, it's trustworthy, and it's really easy to use. And easy to use is based on the feedback that we, we get from our clients. It's not just uh, some marketing idea that we want to push. Um, when Rotella started developing Trust Track, um, of course, 
afterwards uh, continuously improving and we strive to do that uh, daily today, uh, we really closely monitor the needs of the market. Uh, we identify the issues and pain points for the industries and for the businesses uh, so we could focus on the features that are needed the most because, you know, we cannot cover everything. Uh, so um, we see that the main three big areas uh, where we focus talking uh, about the markets are efficiency, uh, efficiency for the business, uh, because the businesses need to save the time and the effort uh, that their employees spend. Uh, and that's the way to increase the profits. You save the money, you save the time, you save the money, you increase the profit. Um, the efficiency from the perspective that the businesses need to, you know, to have the ability to plan the routes, uh, to monitor the tasks assigned to the vehicles, to the drivers, uh, the, the need to communicate with the drivers um, and many other things. Uh, of course, we're not mentioning, you know, the, the fuels, the fuel monitoring and many, many other things. Um, then another main focus that we see is the security. So, uh, you know, obviously it's very important to prevent thefts uh, and ensure that the drivers are well behaving, uh, not uh, not making uh, any, any issues while they are driving on the road. Uh, so they are safe themselves and uh, uh, keeping the same environment around them. Uh, and of course, last but not least, I think what we face, especially in Europe, and it's spreading all over the world, it's the need to have uh, um, adherence to safety rules and regulations. Um, it's by using tachograph data and driver behavior monitoring in Europe. Uh, it's uh, the need to business being uh, compliable with various regulations, uh, whether it is some regulated goods or some audits by the uh, government or by any other institutions. Uh, and of course, uh, establishing the guidelines for the for the safety, for example, driver fatigue monitoring and uh, driving times monitoring as we are uh, restricted for how long, for example, the driver can work when he have to rest and where to rest and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so we have all of the use cases uh, and then, you know, we're wondering, so who are these um, businesses that we want to target? because since you can't make everybody happy all at once uh, we need to start somewhere uh, so we identified that the main segments that Ruptel is aiming uh, with our software solutions are these uh, that we consider long-haul transportation companies uh, light commercial vehicles and logistics which is especially booming uh, having in mind all of the you know COVID situation that we are working on uh, from our perspective, within the last year, we see huge, huge uh, potential and growth in this in this specific uh, segment. Uh, then, of course, car rental companies and corporate fleets that we are building the solution upon and helping our clients to work with that. Uh, so these are our target customers. Of course, however, depending on their exact need, uh, we can and have served many more segments, like uh, the ones mentioned on the right uh, side of the slide. So, of course, if there is a need, we have a possibility to work with construction sites, agriculture, and, and many others. So, uh, you know, it's the customer who decides, who decides if it's a good fit uh, or maybe some customization, some tailoring is needed. It depends on the use cases that uh, you as a service providers or also the end clients um, bring to us. And uh, we need to evaluate what can be originally covered and uh, where the limitations lie. Um, yeah, so all of the great stocks, uh, what are the benefits for the users? Uh, most probably that's uh, the most important part. So the benefit is that TrustTrack offers what the transport manager uh, could want or need uh, while working daily. Uh, so first and foremost, you know, it's precise location and status of the vehicles. It's tracking uh, live data from the vehicles on board computer or any other digital sources that we connect with. Uh, and of course, we have the tools for the analysis. So uh, when we're talking about the analysis, it's analysis of the working processes, uh, driver behavior, vehicle performance, uh, again, uh, routing and tasking, uh, fuel, and many, many more. Um, 
one very important thing is that the platform, as I mentioned before, it's um, perfect for beginners and as well as advanced users and needs are met. So it's easy to use, easy to understand, fast and smoothly running, and it's interactive. Interactive from the point that uh, we have the assist me tool. So if you're a beginner, you know, you can be onboarded, uh, you're guided through how to work with the, uh, with the system. Uh, and of course, it's great that using the newest technologies and, and best practices that like we have uh, according to our biggest uh, uh, end users uh, and then customers in the market uh, as it was defined. So basically, we have data, databases for fast data processing. Uh, we're acknowledged by major market players. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, we have great, great user interface uh, design uh, that our Customers, when they are giving the feedback, they emphasize that this is the, the grabbing part that uh, clicks and then uh, we can go deeper uh, into the values and the use cases that uh, can be covered by our product. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's dig into the practical part, Sharunas. <laughs> great, great. Thank you, Neringa. Uh, so uh, what does the system actually uh, consist of? What are the main components? Uh, of Ruptelas uh, software solutions, right? So we start with obviously the uh, platform itself. So there is um, the web platform that the user just uh, you know, logs in and, and can use on their browser. Uh, we'll jump into it and, and look at the live version in a few minutes. But for now, it's fair to say that most of the functionality lies here. Um, this platform is tailored uh, to the uh, uh, fleet manager with various modules, uh, but you know it is customizable. So by enabling some and you know disabling many uh, others, you know you can match exactly what the user wants and what do they want to see, what what they need uh, to experience in their uh, uh, daily job. Uh, next, we have the two uh, mobile applications. So we have one, uh, which is the trust track platform on uh, either Android or iOS for the moments when the fleet manager or dispatcher is on the go themselves, but must have the relevant information at all times. And the other one is for the drivers, uh, just on Android for now, with an option to get pre-configured tablets from Rotella too. So you could you know, install it directly in, in the vehicle uh, right away. And the driver application was developed not only for communication, but also with navigation and task management in mind. So in short, great tools for the, uh, great mobile tools for the mobile fleet. Um, of course, there's quite a few things happening behind the curtain. So the admin panel, which you see here on the screen is for the service providers such as yourselves that want to have a close control of the customer, of their web users, of their objects, tracker configuration, updates, settings, plans, and much more. Um, our engineers would actually even provide you with some training to make the most of this tool and easily manage, manage the end user experience afterwards. Um, Trustring can also be made part into a much larger system. For example, you know, an existing ERP solution that the end user already has and this can be done through the use of our API integration. You can see here on the screen, there are quite a few data points or even data point groups uh, that can be relayed via these APIs uh, to you know, any required uh, third party uh, system. And as Neringa already alluded a little bit, we are actually very happy and consider it one of our biggest compliments that we get from the end users is that the system is easy to use and easy to get started with. TrustTrack has an interactive assist me guide that you can take you, you know, step by step through every functionality on the platform. You either click uh, a question that's, uh, you know, sort of uh, available uh, in the list or even type in a keyword and the guide highlights a path for you, um, you know, to the needed result. Um, of course, there's also the documentation page online uh, with detailed instructions, and you get the support from our uh, engineers that help navigate the system as well as find custom solutions maybe for some specific cases. 
Right, uh, this is where we uh, get to jump into the live account and have a quick look at it. Uh, let me just find the right screen for it. So this is it. This is what you would see uh, as a new user uh, or you know any returning user once you log in, you get into the main screen of TrustTrack as you know appropriate for a GPS tracking platform, it is a map. You know? So we start with a map. Um, there are quite a few options. So we have Google Maps um, by default uh, on Street Map. Uh, there's satellite view hybrid option. And for the really price sensitive customers, there is also the open source um, open street maps version. Uh, I prefer the uh, street map. So for this uh, presentation, at least, I'll try and stick uh, with this one. Uh, then going counterclockwise from that uh, right bottom corner, we have a few options uh, for selecting different geo zones for uh, measuring areas, uh, seeing the traffic from Google, uh, which is already integrated. We have the street view, uh, the little human that you could put on the map. Obviously, you can uh, go into full screen and so on. In the top right corner, you have the account settings. So you can switch the languages. Uh, there's quite a few uh, supported uh, languages for TrustTrack. And you know you can switch different uh, measurement units, kilometers, miles, so depending on what you need. Also here you have the uh, option to generate links. So you would send a URL to some uh, customer of yours, maybe who's waiting for a delivery, and they can track it uh, once the delivery is done, uh, once the timer is over, that link uh, self-destructs, so they no longer see uh, your vehicle anymore. Uh, also, we have the notifications here uh, at the top. Um, these are available as well uh, via SMS uh, or email. So not only here on the platform, but it's it's a good way to find what's uh, find out what's happening. Uh, obviously, this being a demo account, there is quite a few things going on. Um, as I mentioned, there is the assist me uh, button that can uh, you know you can. Pre-select, uh, get uh, select some of the you know added questions here, or even type a question uh, yourself. But once you click it, there is a very uh, nice interactive tool that tells you where to go next, what to click next, and take you through the entire process. All right, let's come back to the main screen. Uh, also, there is a user guide. So it opens up a sort of Wikipedia style, um, very detailed information about the platform itself. So if you want to dive, dive even deeper, uh, you can always find that um, here. Of course, we have a search bar as well for typing in you know, uh, the names of the vehicles and finding them on, uh, on the map or some location that you need to find very quick. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the, the main um, tools around the screen. And on the left hand side, we have a sidebar with all the different modules that uh, TrustTrack has. So obviously, we can start with the top one, the fleet status. Over here, you will see all the vehicles that are available for that uh, web user to, uh, to see. You know, you can see if the vehicle is uh, moving, if they're idling, is it maybe uh, blocked um, by the, uh, it's sort of ignition maybe is blocked for it or and so on. Uh, when you click uh, on uh, the vehicle, you can also see some uh, details about it. It immediately takes you uh, into the uh, location where it is on the map and then shows you the information about the vehicle. You can see its history. You can see the events uh, you know, that are associated with it. Uh, maintenance tasks, you can also see uh, fuel, and you can see uh, you know, more detailed analysis of what is happening with this, uh, this object, with this vehicle. Okay, let's go one, one lower, then we have our uh, drivers module. So you will see you know, if the driver is assigned to some vehicle, you can actually assign them here uh, you know, through the through the web platform itself, mm -hmm. or it can be done automatically. You know, they can um, you know identify themselves with an RFID card, a Bluetooth uh, button maybe, and they 
you know, automatically are assigned to a vehicle. Uh, also, you can set uh, some information about uh, the driver in the system and even create for them the logins uh, for the driver app in here. Okay, next we have the communication module. So over here, you see that the dispatcher can chat, uh, you know, send messages back and forth with the driver. They can also share uh, documents both ways. Uh, and I think I saw a picture here earlier as well. But so <laughs> you, you can also uh, have, uh, there we go, someone's reached the end of the road somewhere. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you can you can communicate really easily uh, with the driver, and you don't need to jump into some third-party app like WhatsApp or or you know any any other chat. Uh, it, you have it here internally within uh, Trustrap. Next uh, below that we have the geo zones. So there are two types of geo zones on Trustrap. They can either be circular, so basically a circle around a specific point uh, with a diameter that you set. Mm -hmm or it can be polygonal, so it can be multiple angles. Uh, and in the end, you can use either of those types to, you know, as a condition for various events, uh, rules for your drivers, and, and so on. Uh, then we get into the actual events here as well. Uh, so obviously, you can create an event for quite a lot of things. Um, there are a lot of conditions, you know, one of them being the geozones I just mentioned, uh, it can be the uh, detection of ignition in the vehicle, speed, uh, time and distance, fuel, or indeed any input that the tracker um, gives uh, to the platform that the tracking can get from the vehicle. So you can see that there's quite a few things, even the list <laughs> is, is so long. Um, yeah, and then you use that, sorry, you use that uh, condition, uh, you set it, um, uh, so when it's triggered, you will get the notification and it will be registered as an event. And actually, you can go into very specific use cases and, you know, add a lot of conditions together. So the more um, different things you want to happen, uh, you define that um, event yourself. Uh, also, you, as I said before, you can set either you will get an SMS, uh, a system notification here in the uh, top right, or on the mobile app as well, and you can get an email uh, for these happening. Next, we have the routing and tasking, which I will skip for now because Nering is going to take you in a lot more detail through it. Uh, the other thing that we have got is the uh, maintenance tasks. So you can literally uh, forget about uh, ever thinking, did I forget to insure the vehicle? Is it now overdue? Uh, you can set it here. Uh, you can set a different counter, either it being time, a mileage, uh, or working hours. You know, So it's not only for insurance. You can do it for tires. You can do it for oil changes and various, various things. And it's a separate type of, uh, basically, task that uh, is created for each vehicle. You assign it to that vehicle, you get notifications uh, when it's about to come due and you don't really even need to worry about it anymore. It's always going to happen on time. Um, okay, going down the list, we have the tachograph uh, downloads and we'll get into that in a bit more detail as well. Uh, same as for the uh, driving times and the uh, analysis of the driver time. The reports cannot be understated here, really. So everything that you can uh, see on the platform, every event, every input can be part of a report. You can either, you know, uh, click generate a new report and get one, um, you know, add all the points that you need in there, and, you know, choose a different type. It's very customizable. So whatever the end user needs in the end, um, they can mix and match and, you know, get the document that they need. Uh, also, uh, once it's created, it's uh, possible to view it here uh, on the web, uh, get an Excel file or a PDF, you know, it's up to them which they want. And, you know, you don't need to create, um, you know, a report every time from scratch. You can make uh, either templates or you can even um, 
create a subscription so it automatically gets uh, generated you know maybe every two weeks for example you know so whatever uh, the information in the report you need you automatically get uh, for example into your email and you don't even need to open up this tab you just set it up once and you know it's sent automatically okay going down the list again we have the eco drive module which is uh, kind of our way for uh, lecturing and, and educating the drivers a little bit. So you can check, uh, you know, how the driver has behaved, you know, were they uh, braking uh, harshly? Did they idle too long and waste some uh, fuel? Were they, you know, easy on the tires? And you can actually compare them to all the other drivers that you have available, right? So you can create ratings, you know, maybe uh, reward the driver who's doing the best, maybe, you know, discipline the driver who's doing the worst. I'm, you know, more uh, of, of thinking let's reward the better guy and, you know, tell the other guy just to improve. Mm. Um, but what's important is that you can actually set these ratings yourselves, right? So you can tell them, you know, what is okay, what is a little bit on the fence and what's definitely in the red. So these all these parameters over here are available um, for the web user to, to manipulate and check. And, you know, the, the rules can be custom for uh, every, every end user. Okay. Um, down at the bottom, then we have the dashboard. So even though when you log in, uh, you obviously directly see the, the map and so on, but the platform was developed for the, you know, fleet manager, the dispatcher uh, and, and their work in mind. So, if they just want to see what's happening with their fleet, are there any tasks that are pending? You know, are there any notifications that need to be taken care of and, and noticed right away? We have that dashboard down here, and they can just, you know, uh, obviously, you know, select different parameters, adjust it, uh, customize it a little bit to what they really need, and have a, you know, one-stop uh, look at the at the system and know what are the most important points to take care of, you know, during that day if they log in in the morning. Uh, down at the bottom, there's also the Send Geo, uh, which is a uh, third party integration actually from uh, Poland. It's to do with uh, taxation for the goods, but it's not the only integration that we have uh, in Trust Truck actually. For example, we have the Hugo, the Hungarian um, tolls as well in, in here. Uh, where you know we automatically uh, report the you know mileage and the driving uh, so that the tolls get uh, calculated automatically and you don't need to mm -hmm. to buy them ahead of time and we are constantly working on adding more and more of these integrations so if you'll be interested uh, we can talk about each one uh, in detail and you can ask your um, sales manager obviously but i won't focus on that uh, too much here today Right. So that was the end user uh, view and, and, and the modules that we have, um, sort of a quick overview. And as we mentioned before, there's two things that we want to look in a bit more uh, detail, uh, a bit closer. So I'll give the stage back to Naringa for the routing and tasking. Thank you, Sharonas. Uh, yeah, I will, before that, I will just also uh, emphasize that I see that uh, a lot of questions are popping mm -hmm. in the chat, so don't worry, we'll definitely answer them. There are a designated time in the end of the presentation, so we'll go one, one by one, and uh, we can check them, so be patient. <laughs> um, yeah, so continuing the webinar, um, yeah, we're exploring a few more modules, so, so I will uh, dig into the routing and tasking. Uh, so basically, routing and tasking is one of the most recent, uh, the newest uh, and most recently updated um, solution on the trust track that we have. Um, the module provides a very simple workflow. You create, create the most efficient route. You send the task to the driver. Uh, how do you send the task to the driver? Driver has the driver application. So once you create the task, you, you uh, assign the driver and then the driver just sees uh, what are the tasks in his driver application and then he can actually turn on the navigation and follow the prescribed route. Um, yeah, it's monitoring uh, from the logistics manager's uh, perspective, it's monitoring the whole progress of how the tasks are being done. 
so you see how the vehicle is moving on the map and then also you track the progress you see which waypoints uh, were already uh, done uh, where the driver arrived or not and then you can communicate about the progress share the uh, files and communicate uh, photos and and any documentation as Sharon has shortly described uh, like communication is going between the driver and the logistics manager uh, and of course uh, noting the the accurate arrival times that's uh, the most important thing i would say uh, so um, what is the main use uh, using trust track and routing and tasking uh, the fleet manager does know doesn't need to jump in between the different applications you know uh, like uh, doing something on the route planning part then jumping into the uh, calling on the mobile phone to the driver or sending something on the communications uh, possibilities like what, WhatsApp, Viber, and so on and so on. We just had a name and the goal to put everything in one solution so it would be like a useful tool uh, for communication and for checking how everything is going on the road. Um, one important thing is uh, that there's an option to use the hair maps overlay for heavy commercial vehicles uh, because as we know there are differences between the heavy commercial vehicles and light commercial vehicles. Heavy commercial vehicles need to note some attributes that they have, like uh, axle weights, trailer lengths, uh, dangerous cargoes and ADRs. So all of that needs to be noted and evaluated, uh, you know, to enable a reliable transportation uh, and, and going to the endpoint uh, where it is designated to be uh, going. So. For heavy commercial vehicles, we have this option with here maps, uh, so you know to avoid that the cargo, uh, sorry, uh, so that the truck would be going into the old town, that would be going in some tunnel, for example, in Norway where the tunnels are smaller than the trailer could fit, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, all in all, it is for optimizing, for optimizing the efficiency of the vehicle utilization, saving the workload for the fleet managers, and of course reducing the operational expenses. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, I think let's jump into the actual trust track. So it wouldn't be just a slide. So we'd actually see how, see how the product is, uh, is working. Um, yeah, all good. Um, so in here we have routing and tasks. That's the uh, window how we can uh, see all of the task monitoring part. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, it's adjustable, so whatever you need to see uh, more in detail, you can just uh, uh, go, zoom, and check you know, how uh, the vehicles uh, are moving within the region that you are actually tracking. So this is the map, um, but if I want to see uh, how the tasks are being done in much, much more detail, I have such possibilities. So in here we have the task overview, uh, we have the task name, the vehicles, some of them are assigned, some of them not yet. Drivers as pre-allocated to the vehicles. We have uh, different waypoints uh, that are created for uh, the specific tasks. Uh, we can have uh, up to 20 waypoints uh, assignated for, for the specific route, for the specific vehicle. Uh, then we can just uh, filter, sort, and check what kind of uh, tasks there are and what kind of statuses there are. Uh, of course, we can add arrival times and see the communication uh, icon and communicate with the driver directly. So if there is a, a driver already assigned, then there is a communication module. It's possible to communicate to the driver on his uh, mobile uh, app. If not, then not. We need to assign the driver first to be able to communicate with someone. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, I will jump uh, and show how to create the task. Uh, so this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have two options, as I mentioned. Uh, one option is for light commercial vehicles. It can be any light commercial vehicles that are used, for example, for servicing some fleets, uh, for utility businesses, for uh, delivery businesses, you know, you name it according to what kind of client you're getting. Uh, and then, of course, we have a heavy commercial vehicle. So this is like logistics company that are delivering goods. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of dry goods, um, bulk, 
uh, I don't know, flowers, food, whatever. Uh, but basically, they have a commercial vehicle that needs to have uh, the cargo to be delivered from one point to another point. And quite often, it can also be that it won't be, um, it can be longer than one day. So uh, let's create a task for have a commercial vehicle shortly. Uh, so if we choose have a commercial vehicle, the map changes into the here maps. And uh, then we see slightly different um, uh, view. So that's normal that it changes. It should be like that. Um, we need to uh, make some settings so the route would be calculated uh, correctly according to the have a commercial vehicle attributes. So you would get the most use of the here maps. Um, so we have two things to be uh, noted, uh, like two, two settings, two type of settings, I would say. Uh, so one thing is um, vehicle parameters, uh, like the length, width, height, and anything that you have uh, to be prescribed. And then we have the route parameters. Are you uh, choosing the most fastest route or the balanced uh, route, meaning that you know you need to balance the travel time and the distance in the best possible way? Uh, should you avoid any tunnels, paved roads, ferries, or any difficult turns that where the truck uh, would be uh, difficult to turn around, for example? And we have two very important things in here. We have the stick to the route option. Uh, so if we put, uh, while planning the route, if we put stick to the route option, uh, then the driver must go accordingly to the pre-planned route, meaning that if he will be using the navigation, the navigation will guide him for the pre-assigned route. And if he will try to turn around somewhere and uh, make some unintended, unneeded turn, he will be redirected to the route again and again, because he needs to stick to the route, because that's how the system suggested. That's how a logistics manager decided to, that the driver should go. That's the most efficient way. Maybe it's the safest route. For example. Maybe it's the safest route, um, or maybe it should just uh, that's a decision how the company works. And then the including of the traffic. Uh, so um, the traffic information is in there while you are planning the route. Uh, it's uh, like real traffic, so. Uh, while planning the route is definitely taken into account, if you choose so. If not, then not. It depends on what are the, the, the selections then. Let's see this part. And then if we're talking about the EDR. Uh, so again, if uh, the cargo is containing any dangerous um, materials, explosive gas or any others, uh, you can actually point that, mark that, and it will be also evaluated tunnel categories as well. If you need um, to avoid some of the selected categories, uh, you need to select any of them. So yeah, so let's save uh, the options. Uh, let's pretend that that's the vehicle that we are transporting and let's create the, uh, the route. Let's say from Milan to Paris, two very beautiful cities. And then there are options, but maybe I did something bad. I think you need to zoom in just. Uh... I think so too. Okay, good. Mm, I think I did some prosthetics very bad, but uh, let it be. Okay, so. Let's, because I did it a minute ago. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Okay, all good. So, um, yeah, so basically that's the way uh, what the system is suggesting the way we should go. Uh, there's one possibility to go for this road. Uh, there's also another possibility to go this road, but this is the, uh, how to say, worse option. Uh, so that's the first initial option that we get as a logistics manager. Uh, so basically, we can name the task like uh, Rome. Rome task, for example. Uh, there's an option to assign the vehicles uh, from the fleet that we have. Uh, whatever the vehicle should uh, be taking the route specifically, we can make any notes. 
uh, and the most most recent development that we actually released uh, yesterday uh, is the possibility to track the deviations from the planned route. That means uh, that if me, uh, if I as a logistics manager uh, create the route, prescribe it to the specific uh, driver, to the specific vehicle, and I put the track deviations for the pre-planned route uh, option, uh, it means that later on, as I will be analyzing how the driver went through all of the waypoints, uh, I will also get the information and I will see uh, whether the driver actually took the road as I prescribed, or did he deviate it somewhere and then the road would be simply red. So this is a very recent uh, option, very recent uh, release that we have, uh, like essential uh, to those who are actually working with the routing and essential to those who want to track, you know, uh, fuel costs and whether the actual planning is giving the, the use for the company uh, or maybe some drivers are just deviating for no reason because, you know, they know better for some reason, I don't know. So, stubborn. Yeah, stubborn, for example. So we have, uh, yes, yeah, um, different options from that perspective. Uh, yeah, so once we save the task, we're actually redirected back into the uh, task overview window, and then all of the information is uh, again visible in here. So we can actually, uh, you know, select uh, which tasks uh, are new ones, uh, which ones, old ones we can uh, search of the tasks and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is um, quite easy to navigate and understand. Uh, one important thing is that you can see as many parameters as you want to. You can just select them and prescribe uh, as it is like the same logic going through the all of the solutions uh, in our trust track. Uh, and also the actual editing, duplicating the task, deleting all of the manager is just very simply done next to it. So for example, I can do the actions that I need, or I can just jump into the task summary and uh, see all of the task information like vehicle, driver, if I made the submission, plan trip distances, deviation, uh, what is ongoing uh, in real time, plan trip time, waypoints information, and so on and so forth. So all of this is accessible from one window, so like no hassle uh, would be related in between. Yeah, so pretty, uh, pretty straightforward solution uh, that our users are getting the use of. Um, yeah, maybe one also important thing to mention in this place is that uh, as a full solution provider, we provide the trust track, routing and desking as part of the solution of, uh, of uh, the functionality, uh, driver application, and there's also an option to buy uh, tablets also uh, from us manufactured not by Rotella, by our uh, provider, uh, but there's an option. So if you need um, the driver not to be using mobile phone or any other uh, gadget, uh, then you can just buy tablets from us, get the service. Uh, we'll make sure that all of the updates are being uh, done on time, uh, that if it is broken, we will replace it and so on and so forth. So it will be uh, as a service uh, that you get also from Rotella. Yeah, I think uh, let's jump back into the actual presentation. Um, so, as I mentioned, driver application. Uh, driver application is Android-based for the drivers and enables the driver to receive, confirm, and, con and keep track of the tasks that the fleet manager have assigned. Uh, it also serves as a communication channel bit with, between the driver and dispatcher. And then option to share pictures, files, uh, text, anything uh, that needs to be shared and of course the navigation so navigation is being based either on google maps or here maps depending uh, what kind of task is created by the logistics manager if the task is created as have a commercial vehicle a task then it is based on here maps and the user the driver will get the uh, navigation and the task as of here maps navigation so just click it and drive and don't deviate from the route prescribed <laughs> So, yeah, and last but not least, the driver is also able to review the individual eco-driving ratings within that application. Um, so, for the time being, that's what we have on the driver app. Of course, you know, we get the feedback from the customers, what might be needed, so uh, no limits for future development and improvement, uh, I would say. Um, yeah, Sharun, I jump in. I talk a lot. Thank you, Nanya. <laughs> Again, um, yeah, the next thing to look 
add, and I saw the chat uh, it does have quite a few questions. I think right. it might be easier to take it all uh, all in one go at the end. Uh, so I'll try and uh, not waste too much time with this. Uh, but it is a very important part of our um, you know, overall solution, the tachograph um, downloads and, and all the information that we can get from the tachograph. So let's jump right into it. The first thing is the uh, real-time monitoring and analysis of the driver's time. So how long have they been driving already? How long they still have available within that day or that week? And when are they um, required to stop and rest next, uh, for example? So to jump quickly into Trust Track, as an example, I can show you uh, maybe one of the objects and you just pick a um, object, uh, a vehicle from the fleet status list. And at the end, there is a time analysis tab, which uh, once you open that up, you can see that there is uh, one driver uh, working right now. There's another driver assigned. So maybe they're working, they're working in tandem. Uh, you can see that there is uh, that many hours and minutes left to drive within the day. There's the option for that um, additional one hour uh, as well. Uh, you can see how long they've uh, driven, how long they worked uh, in total. When's that next uh, rest? And also the information about their um, week. So that's all the all the hours and, and all of the um, data is available. At, you know, it's real-time monitoring. So this comes uh, not from the... Uh, downloaded uh, file, but it's uh, through the K line and it comes directly into the device. And so we can see this uh, immediately. If we want to go and check the downloaded uh, tachograph file, we can do that as well. Uh, for that, we use the uh, tachograph uh, downloads module, basically, right? And it's, you can do it as a one-off or you can set up a periodical download, so maybe every 28 days, for example. Uh, that would make sense, as you must do that by regulation anyway. And you can um, download the tachograph unit uh, data or the driver um, car data as well. So that would be right at the middle of the screen on the left-hand side. Yes, and you can see here there's quite a few downloads already done. And as Neringa showed, uh, for all the other uh, interfaces, you can, you know, you can sort them. You can add some filters. Uh, you can see what's uh, what has happened with these files before. Uh, important is to say that in order for this to work, uh, there must also be a, a way to identify, you know, who's downloading this. So we have additionally a app that you can install into your computer and it works with a company card reader. So you identify yourself, and over here, instead of it being uh, red here, it would be green, and you know you, you would see that, um, Trust Track would see that there is a company card connected at the moment, and you can initiate uh, the download. So you can either um, do a download, as I said, um, once, or you can even set it um, as a schedule and do it periodically. Obviously, you can uh, name it. Uh, you can select which card if you have more than one connected. And you can download either by an object, meaning uh, by vehicle from fleet status or by driver. And then obviously you select for which uh, objects are the drivers you're downloading. Um, you select whether you just want the DTD file or you want the um, driver card information as well. Yes, if there is more than one driver in the vehicle, you can actually get it from both slots uh, too in the, in the tachograph. Uh, you can select some additional data like faults and events, speed data, technical data, and you can select what's the period. Either you want it, um, uh, you know, download the information since the last download or some custom period that you have in mind, and maybe you need to report about it. Um, if you do set up, um, download as a schedule, you will also see, um, you know, a question, when do you want it to happen? So you can, you know, make adjustments there. And at the end, there's also a special op option to not only see it in here in Trust Track, 
but you can designate an FTP uh, server where that file gets downloaded into, up uploaded into as well. So if you, you know, you collect all these files in one place and everybody in your company needs to reach them, then it's easy to do that too. All right, over here, you can see some of the schedules and you can delete them, enable them, disable them. Um, out of these downloads, you can actually select and you know delete them, uh, upload them to, to the server uh, manually, or just download them into your computer, for example. Great. Jumping back to the slides, what is next? Next, we have the driving times uh, analysis. So you know it's within the tachograph solution scope, but it's more detailed um, and it's to do with the violations mostly. It's a great way to visualize European regulations and to see when the driver had violated any of them um, and you know what's the specific explanation uh, behind it you know why it is considered a violation uh, it's important to note that to use uh, this module uh, you must also have the taco file uh, module so it must be downloaded before it will be able to analyze it it is um, need, it needs that data for identifying what was the driving time what was the periods so then it can calculate whether where there were any violations. And how does that look on trust track? So that's obviously another module on the left hand side. And first you will see a list of all the violations. Now you'll see which driver it was, when did it happen, how severe was it, what's the name of that um, violation, you know, uh, and some factual information for you know why we detected it and and how we decided that it was a violation um, this being the demo uh, and the drivers not being real so there's no vehicle and country where it happened but that would be also some columns that would be available for you so you know you would know that that driver was driving that vehicle at that time and it happened in this country for example uh, you can look at it in a lot more detail for a specific driver so the driver activity tab within this module allows you to choose driver. Also, you must choose a period of, uh, you know, how long you want to have the analysis done for. And you have a great graph here. So you can see in um, very um, sort of minute detail what happened. Was the uh, driver uh, driving that time? Were they just considered working or available? Uh, or they were resting. So these statuses are actually coming in from that uh, tachograph file. In some cases, you know, maybe there's no data in the file, but you know, as a fleet manager or the end user as a fleet manager knows what happened then, you can fill in the gaps. So you can designate it as a specific um, uh, specific type uh, of, of uh, pastime and it will be changed in the graph. Uh, you can add some notes here as well. Um, Within this uh, graph, you can see that there are some flags. You know, these are the actual uh, violations. So when you hover over it uh, below, you can see that uh, the text is actually highlighted as well. And it works vice versa. If I hover over the text, I can see which flag gets uh, highlighted on, on the graph too. Yeah, okay. So. That is our uh, tachograph solution, uh, you know, in, in, in a very short uh, sense, uh, but then, you know, it, it will be able, you, you will be able to, to discuss it in, in a lot more detail and set it up uh, for yourselves on the, on the demo versions with your uh, sales managers, right? Okay, so we've been uh, doing a lot of talking just uh, into a uh, blank screen and not answering your questions as, as fast as maybe I hoped but um, we'll get to some final thoughts uh, and when then uh, we'll get to the Q&A session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, since we looked at most of the features, let's jump into the benefits and you know, why, why trust track, why the solution of Reptella. So it's all well and good solving the problems for the end user and creating value for the end user. But I would say, you know, it's important to understand why service providers such as yourselves should uh, get on board with us. So um, we'll 
will be here for you in the long term. Uh, because Ruptala, that's the vision. We wish to have a close partnership with uh, our service providers, with our clients. Uh, our aim is to grow together, adapt to the changing world together. And for that, we need you know inputs and values from, from both sides, you and, and us. Uh, also, there is a simplicity with uh, dealing um, just one technology provider as us, full solution. So we provide that and we take care of the future developments, whether that's hardware, software, uh, or any support that you need. And last but not least, uh, the reach of Reptela's global knowledge and experience brought to your local market, you know, can literally help move mountains, at least by tracking them. So that's the vision and the aim uh, that we have internally while working uh, worldwide at Ruptella. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have much to say in here. We have special offer in relation to the uh, to this webinar. So you can have a possibility to uh, have a trust track premium um, free for three months. Uh, so that's the offer. Of course, you have to test it and try it beforehand. So um, feel free to contact us. Uh, we have Christina as a sales manager. We have many other colleagues, uh, and we are happy to uh, to show the demo once again to you personally. Very, very detailed, and uh, to understand the use cases and the problems that you're juggling with, uh, and then to tailor each solution for your own business, and then of course to let you test uh, and and have the demo version and to get the offer from us uh, after signing the contract. Okay, so let's jump into the questions. Um, one of the questions that I see from Mohamed, I saw that you already uh, arranged the, the demo with Christina, <laughs> but uh, uh, can uh, a client use the software as a white label? Yes, you can. Um, uh, for that, you just need to consult with our support and everything can be arranged, no problem with that. Um, talking about the uh, trip history and all of the uh, history data. So basically, I saw also that my colleague Jonas um, covered this question. So there is a possibility to get the trip history for seven years or whatever uh, the need is. Uh, basically, we have this data in the database. It's just the arrangement and that some additional payment might be required because we uh, provide the history, for example, for the reports for 13 months period. So that's how long do you get the historic data. Other than that, it's moved into the database and uh, needs to be requested additionally. Uh, can we pre-compute estimated tolls? Um, I'm not quite sure what uh, this relates to, so I would suggest... I think they're, they're thinking about if, if we know the task, if we know the routes, uh, can we know already what the Rose toll tolls. Yeah, would be? I think mm -hmm. in, in the future, probably, we, we will do that. For now, it's more about live reporting uh, yeah. and then the actual... Uh, payment is then uh, generated uh, mm -hmm. by the toll provider. Yeah, not yet. Uh, it's in the feedback from the customers that we get. We are considering that for future development for sure. Uh, do we offer PTV maps like planning a route for truck with respect to mapping guide uh, standard? We don't offer PTV maps, uh, but we would need to discuss that in, in very, very detail. What's the use case and what's the need? So uh, maybe that can be catered. I cannot comment much more. Uh, yeah, what dynamic data such as historical speed patterns or live traffic is included in DTA? So I saw that this question came when we were doing the routing part. So uh, yes, as I presented, traffic, uh, live traffic can be, if there's, if you choose so, the live traffic data can be included uh, while calculating the DTA, whatever uh, your decision is, if you put that mark, then it will be done. I think it's fair to say that it's either calculated by the Google Maps mm -hmm. uh, with that data included, yeah. uh, or the here maps respectively, whichever uh, type of task you, you select. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can alerts go to the app? Um, we have two apps, Trust Track app and driver application. In the driver application, we don't any notifications, although like we are discussing maybe for very, very far future. Uh, other than that, um, we uh, we don't have uh, alerts in the driver application. Can we connect live cam? Um, can we connect live cam? No, I think we, we have the uh, at the moment only the snapshot camera, uh, which can you know uh, take a, a quick picture of what's happening at that point. 
but we do not yet have like a live streaming of the of the cabin if that's uh, what the um, Jim uh, was asking about. So I think um, there is uh, thinking about it. In there the is a thinking about it. We are considering uh, to having video possibility. So we would just need to discuss the use case that we have. Um, maybe we'll have that. That's a teaser. <laughs> Um, yeah, again, we had more than one event in one vehicle by one step. Um, yes, yes, we can. So we just need to have a deeper demo and we can demonstrate that once again, like showing the, this time distance event and many others. And I think it's probably safe to say that you don't need to create an event for every vehicle. It will apply to all the vehicles in your fleet, mm -hmm. at least all the vehicles that the web user can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I see that we have many, many questions, uh, and I see that our time is up. <laughs> so uh, just not to uh, be afraid and not to get you hanging, you know, uh, we have uh, all of your questions. Uh, we'll pass all of the questions to our sales managers. Uh, we see who gave the questions, what is interesting to you, and we will contact you um, again. If you have uh, the need to have the demo, I strongly encourage you to just test our solution, go deeper into the presentation, uh, and discuss all of the matters and questions that you have, and then I believe we will, we will find a solution uh, that would be useful for you and your clients. So I think that yeah. would be it. Uh. Next I time we'll have two hours, I promise. Yes, uh, <laughs> if, if, if you agree to stay for two hours next time, we'll, we'll stay for two hours as well. Uh, but for now, I think that's pretty much from us. Uh, get in touch with either your direct sales manager or Christina, whose contacts you can see here online. Uh, you should be getting the recording of this uh, presentation uh, webinar uh, afterwards as well. Yeah. And we hope to deal with you in person a lot more in the near future. Thank you very much for joining and hopefully uh, we'll keep in contact and work together. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.